Before we start this video, a large thank you to Adrian and Jamie McNiff for their support on Patreon. And a large thank you to Kyle Davies for their immense support towards this channel. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Okay, hello guys, and today we're going to make it so our combos don't always fire on our AI, but we also have a chance for them just to do a regular attack. And we're also going to fix a bug in the lock-on system where when you're facing enemies turn around, the lock-on controls are reversed. So first, let's go over to the attack state. I'm just going to change is comboing. I'm going to rename it to will do combo on next attack. Whoops. I feel like the name is a lot better suited to what we're going to use this for. So let's click OK. All right. Now let's take this right here. I'm just going to move this above here. Let's hit save. Okay, then I'm going to make a statement here called, or a function called roll for combo chance. We haven't made it yet, but we're going to in a second, so don't worry. And down here, we're going to say if current attack dot can combo and will do combo on next attack, then we're going to say current attack is equal to combo action and then return this so we will perform the combo. All right, and down here, we're going to say private void. I'm going to make a function. I'm going to call it roll for combo chance, and this will be the uh, deciding factor in if our enemy will combo or not. We're going to make it very simple, very straightforward, very easy to work with. So we're just going to basically use some really simple math here and create a random generator for this. Um, so all I'm going to say down here in, in this function is float combo chance is equal to random dot range between 0 and 100. And basically, all that's going to do is roll a number between 0 and 100 and give us that number back. And based on that number, we're going to do a couple things. So I'm just going to copy the enemy manager here. And I'm going to insert that there because we're going to use it for this function. And then I'm going to say right below float combo chance if enemy manager dot allow AI to perform combo because we're going to actually have an option to turn it on or off. Some enemies you might not want to be able to combo. And, and combo chance is less than or equal to enemy manager dot combo likelihood. So we haven't made these variables yet, but we're going to and I'll explain what they do. So allowing the AI to perform combo is very straightforward. If you check it, uh, your AI will do a combo. Then we're going to say we'll do combo next attack equals true. Uh, combo likelihood is the percentage between 0 and 100, um, how likely you are to do the combo. So if you're on 100, you will do the combo every time. 50, you will do the combo half of the time. Uh, very straightforward, very simple, very easy to use. So I'm just going to make a setting for this here now. I'm going to put it right here. I'll make a new header. I'm going to call it AI Combat Settings. Then first we'll just plug in the bull here. Whoops, not float, bull. Allow AI to perform combos. So you must check this in order for your AI to combo now. And then right below that we're going to say public float combo likelihood. So again, uh, a number between 0 and 100. 100 will always give you a combo on every attack. 50% uh, will give it to you 50% of the time. And in a future video, we're going to make it so you can have the option to only combo when the AI lands a blow on the player. So I'm just going to put to 100 to make sure it works. I'm just going to tick off allow AI to perform combos. And there we go. Yeah, the AI combos. Excellent. Okay, now let's change the setting. I'm going to throw it to 50. Or 0, rather. Yep, and there we go. He does not combo anymore. Cool, so that works as intended. So you can mess around that setting and you can give different monsters different rates of combos depending on how aggressive they are or what you're going for. Now, we have a bug. I can't exactly show it to you right now, but if we lock on these guys from behind, um, the lock on doesn't perform as it should. And by that, I mean left is right and right is left. And that is because of the way I'm handling the math in the older functions. But we're going to correct that in this video. So no matter what direction you're looking at an enemy from, um, you will lock on to the enemy properly, and moving left will go left, moving right will go right. All right, the first thing we're going to do on the camera handler here is we're going to change the transform variables of current lock on, nearest lock on, left and right lock on to character manager variables. And we do this so we can reference the character manager and not just the transform. This will give us some additional information to work with, and I'll explain why. So you need a couple errors. Let's go ahead and click on these, and all we have to do is change the uh, current lock on target dot position to dot transform dot position. You're going to do this everywhere you find these dot position mistakes. And as for the available targets k dot lock on transform, just erase the end of it and leave it uh, just as available targets k. And then you're going to change current lock on target 
um, and we're just going to say dot transform dot inverse transform point. But we're going to change that momentarily anyway. Again, just erasing the uh, dot lock on transform off the end of available targets K, and we are good to go. And then you should have one more here on player locomotion, and we're just going to say dot transform dot position. Okay, cool. Now on to the actual changing of the code. Let's uh, cross out here these three variables of relative enemy position, distance from left target, and distance from right target, and I'm going to explain why. So before, we were checking the distance from the current lock on target and comparing the other lock on target from what you're currently locked onto. And this is fine, but it has some limitations in what we're going to use it for. So let's change it to input handler. So we're, we're now checking the distance from our character to the uh, available lock on targets. Basically, we're calculating the inverse transform from us uh, relative to where we are as opposed to where our current lock on target is. And then we're going to copy these variables here from distance from left target and distance from right target. And we're actually going to simplify this greatly. And we're just going to say distance from left target uh, is equal to relative enemy position dot x. And then distance from right target is also equal to relative enemy position dot x. Um, you can also use one of these, but uh, we're going to then say if relative position enemy position dot x is greater or, or sorry, less than or equal to zero, zero. And then we're going to add at the end of this and and available targets k does not equal current lock on target. And this is what we had to reference the character manager itself because uh, this will allow us to basically say, hey, the target to our left cannot be the target we're currently locked onto. This is so we don't get the same target filling up two places. And the bottom, we're going to say greater than or equal to zero, zero. We're going to add the same logic here uh, and available targets k. And then we're going to say does not equal current lock on target. And then we're basically going to change a couple more things. We're going to right here where it says um, less than shortest distance left target. We're actually going to change that to greater than because we're using a negative value here. Um, and then we're going to go up top and where we have equals math f infinity. And we're going to say uh, for the distance left target equals minus math f infinity. That's basically infinity in the opposite direction. And lastly, and still very important, you want to make sure you say else if down here. Otherwise, you can get a target filling out two locations at once sometimes. And what will happen is you have to hit the lock on button twice to switch. It doesn't happen very often, but it is a, a possible occurrence. Now, if we go into the game and we lock on these targets, uh, I know you guys can't see which keys I'm pressing, but you try for yourselves. If I go left, I go left. If I go right, I go right. And if I run in front of all these guys, um, my controls will still say relative to my player. So right is right, left is left. Oh my God, this was a mistake. Holy crap. But yeah, now it works as intended. Thank you for whoever found that bug and pointing it out. I actually figured it out also in my uh, my solo build and just fixed it. So I thought I fixed it here too because I almost had it completely forgotten about. But now lock-on works exactly as intended. Uh, we're going to add a couple more cool things to it in the future, like the lock-on orb. And we're going to uh, sync the camera back to center after you unlock. And when the target dies, force unlock. Uh, but we'll cover that in a future episode. So as always, guys, thank you for watching. Be sure to drop a like and leave a comment. It does help appease the YouTube algorithm gods. If you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon below. This, again, was a lot of fun to make. I'm really loving working with the AI, and we're going to keep on trekking with that. I think in the future, soon, we're going to go back and visit some spells and also expand upon our inventory and equipment system. So I will see you guys in the next one.